In this video, I'll be using Spaceflight Simulator. This is a wonderful Android app with realistic orbital mechanics where you can build your own rockets and launch them to space. Over here I have my rocket which I've already built. I'll be launching this to space to show you the various gravitational trajectories which you can make while uh, launching a rocket. At the moment, I am trying to attain enough velocity so that I can get into Earth orbit. To do this, the first step will be to attain a minimum height and velocity so that I can start tilting my rocket. When I throw an object at an angle upwards, uh, it follows a parabolic trajectory. At the moment, if I consider my rocket as a projectile that I'm throwing upwards at an angle, uh, it follows a parabolic trajectory as you can see. Uh, well here, the maximum height attained by the rocket is like around 40 kilometers. Uh, I shouldn't exactly have a maximum height attained by the rocket but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this parabolic trajectory to be big enough that it turns out to become an Earth orbit. To do this I'll have to wait till we get out of the Earth's atmosphere and I'll have to accelerate at the maximum height so that we can get into Earth orbit. Uh, oops, out of fuel so that's the first stage gone. At the second stage, I think we'll get into Earth orbit. If you note that the maximum height is increasing very slowly, this shows that most of the uh, fuel is going towards increasing our uh, distance covered so that we get into Earth orbit. We'll be getting into low Earth orbit when the orbit is out of the atmosphere, which is now. Uh, I'll be trying to do a moon flyby so that I'll show you some more trajectories. At the moment, we have an elliptical trajectory. If we look at the orbit of the moon around the Earth, the eccentricity of this particular orbit is very low. It's uh, really close to zero, which is why that looks circular. This orbit of our spacecraft at the moment looks circular, but it's actually elliptical. And again, we have a very low eccentricity. So it looks like it's circular. I'll just have to get the rocket into the transfer window so that we can send it to the moon. Be doing some orbital maneuvers. Now if I accelerate I'll reach the moon, I'll uh, hopefully get a moon encounter. If you start noticing, the orbit starts becoming more elliptical now. Uh, the Earth, the center of gravity of the Earth actually functions as one of the foci of these elliptical orbits. The other focus is on the other side, uh, but we, we don't need an object on the other side of the focus. We'll be making a moon approach. Hopefully it'll become an encounter. Yes, we will be encountering with the moon's sphere of influence. I'll fast forward till the point where we make the encounter. very close to the moon's sphere of influence right now and a velocity is drip, uh, dropped to 100, 110 meter per second. This velocity is likely to increase considering the... We'll, uh, I think we'll escape the moon's orbit at the moment because we're doing a flyby. Uh, if you notice, we went to the moon's sphere of influence about now and I'll show you this trajectory this is a hyperbolic escape trajectory. A uh, trajectory uh, along the center of mass of an object can be either parabolic or hyperbolic when you're going to escape it. In the sense, when you've got enough velocity to leave, uh, to not enter into orbit around that object, that's when you've got a parabolic or a hyperbolic trajectory. Parabola with eccentricity 1 is the minimum case needed. Um, that is the minimum orbital velocity, the minimum velocity so that we can escape the planet's uh, gravitational pull. Hyperbolic trajectory occurs whenever you have excess uh, velocity, when you have more than the required uh, velocity. This can be very easily explained from the fact that 
the eccentricity of a parabola is 1 and the eccentricity of a hyperbola is greater than 1. I'll try to skim as close to the surface of moon as possible. Uh, this is risky, but let's just do it. Meanwhile, I would like to walk you through some of the velocity of paths, the velocity of a projectile or a craft when it's following a particular trajectory. When we have a circular trajectory, I can just equate GMM by R square, which is the gravitational force with centripetal force and that will give me V equals root of GM by R. So this is the velocity of a craft when it's following a circular trajectory around an object. If the uh, object is following an elliptical trajectory, then the velocity is sandwiched between root of GM by R and root of 2 GM by R. Uh, I think you can guess that the parabolic trajectory should have a velocity of root of 2 gm by r and a hyperbolic trajectory obviously has a velocity greater than 2 gm by r that is root of 2 gm by r now i'll try to i i overestimated it and i got it under into the planet now let's see if we can get it exactly this time And I think this is just about as close as I would dare to get to the moon. Because I don't want to risk a head-on collision with the lunar surface. There's nothing nice about that, even on a simulator. I'll rotate it so that the landing legs take the impact. I don't know if that's going to help. We're really close to the surface right now. The perpendicular distance from the moon's surface on an average is less than 10, kilom 10 uh, kilometers. Now we've reached less than 5 kilometers and we are skimming around the moon's surface at uh, uh, just approximately a little under 500 meters per second. Uh, for a velocity comparison, the top speed of Bugatti Veyron, the fastest commercial car, is 400 kilometers per hour and you got an 18 by 5 factor separating them. So our spacecraft's just like 18 by 5 times faster than the fastest car. And if I'm unlucky, I'll be slamming onto the surface of the moon with that velocity. Okay, we're really close. We're less than 2 kilometers now and in all probability, we'll be getting under 1 kilometer. I'll zoom out. The moon's surface is pretty close, but then the spacecraft is just a tiny dot in the center of the screen, if you can spot it. I'll zoom in when we get a little closer. Spacecraft's kind of hidden among the stars, but it's starting to get a little bit more prominent. And we're very close to the surface now. We're less than, oh, we're less than 200 meters at that particular instant. That bump was really close. Okay, we are under 100 meters. That was really close. We are really close to the moon's surface and why the periapsis showed a wrong value at that instant was because I think that takes a normalized value, the average radius, it takes the average radius of the moon. Now that we are this close to the moon's surface, we can make accurate height readings to the exact surface considering the cratery surface of the moon. Uh, I think the velocity is consistent, uh, sorry, the height from the terrain is consistently increasing, so I think we're getting away from the moon right now. I think we are leaving the moon's surface. Yeah, we definitely are leaving away from the moon now. So, we're in a hyperbolic escape trajectory from the moon. And let's see how this ends up. Oh, I think we're in a hyperbolic escape trajectory for Earth. So with the amount of fuel we have, I don't think we'll ever be seeing home again with that spacecraft. 
and i think we'll be entering solar orbit at this rate yes we will be entering solar orbit i'll skip a few seconds of this video now that we're in the sun orbit i'll try to get our orbit close to venus so that i can demonstrate one of kepler's laws uh venus orbits the sun at 225 days per uh, revolution and the earth orbits the sun at 365 days per revolution we know the apoapsis and the periapsis and we can use kepler's third law the law of orbits to calculate the time it would take for a spacecraft to go from the earth to venus using all of these values Now I have this particular uh, spacecraft. I've called this the Fury spacecraft, and you'll see why very soon. I have turned on infinite fuel for this because no spacecraft getting very far with the amount of fuel we have on this. So I'll need infinite fuel. I'll turn on all the engines, and you can see what the spacecraft is capable of. The very acceleration so powerful. The spacecraft's kind of vibrating about the screen, and we've crossed thousand meter per second already. so we've left usain bolt cheetah and most of human technology far behind we'll soon be breaking all the records of every single spacecraft set where at the moment we are in a solar escape trajectory we're going to escape the solar system with the amount of velocity i have but what i'm going to do is i'm going to try to increase the velocity to very very high rate The sun by the way forms the focus of this hyperbolic trajectory and at the moment we have reached 10000 meter per second very close to 10000 meter per second and we haven't even crossed the moon's orbit yet and now i have put this in super fast forward as you can see it becomes a straight line which shows as the eccentricity tends to infinity we should be tending towards a straight line <laughs> 